right. Welcome to the Fantasy Football Last Call Podcast. My name is Joe Bond, founder of FantasySixPack.net. My co-host, Dave Eddy. What's up, man? Hey, how's it going, man? Just glad people can't see my face. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> I got, I got, I got a face for the radio, Joe. Fair enough. Fair enough. I, uh, I'm not, I'm not making any criticisms here. So, uh, <laughs> thankfully, we are podcasting. So, I guess that's a good thing. Amen. All right, man. So, week six is just about in the books. Right now we're looking at a Steelers Chargers game, twenty-one to nothing. Steelers. Yeah, what the hell? Surprising, right? I mean, third string quarterback, not <laughs> looking bad. I don't really know if it's him or really the little bit of this game I was able to catch before halftime. The Chargers are just getting dominated on both fronts, dude. I mean, yeah. Steelers yeah. just running them over both sides. It's incredible, and it's really making a difference. Yeah, it's really surprising. I mean, I, I've watched. I mean, I've watched a little bit of it. I've been kind of doing other things, so I haven't been fully focused on it. But um, that Steelers defense is is coming to play today. Yeah, I mean, it helps when Philip Rivers has you know a second and a half to throw the ball every time. But that's been kind of their bugaboo all season, really. I mean, that's one of the reasons why Eckler had 15 catches last week. <laughs> right. Right. So hopefully. Hopefully, my wife's sake, he gets another 15 in the second half because uh, I needed it in one league. Really, <laughs> really bad. Yeah, it ain't going to happen. Anyway, uh, let's get to the games here, man. So, start here with the Panthers versus the Bucks. This one was in good old London town. 37 26. Panthers take this one. Panthers had this one pretty well in hand for a while. Bucks got a lot of uh, garbage time, if you want to call it that. Um, and. Start here on Panthers side. McCaffrey got his, I guess. Like the yardage wasn't really there. Kind of a rough day for that, but he scored twice. So as a fantasy owner, you're definitely happy. Samuel was the receiver who benefited the most, had a rushing touchdown and a receiving touchdown. Uh, but I mean, wasn't a super offensive day for them, especially with McCaffrey kind of struggling. But I mean, you're not complaining if you're a Panthers fan, right? <laughs> Nah, man, so many, so many turnovers from Winston that right. you know they That's scored the thirty-seven points without you know fantasy-wise really anything to talk about. Like you, you would think thirty-seven points, you know, and playing the Buccaneers, you'd think that you know McCaffrey had another one of his monster games mm -hmm. and to take away those two touchdowns, and he was non-existent. So yeah, the that's definitely one of those where if you were just to be box score hunting. Um, you would be very confused at the score of this game. <laughs> yeah, and you mentioned the turnovers. Jameis Winston, that's the story there, man. Uh, 400 yards, you love that. You got a touchdown. That's okay. Seven sacks and five interceptions. Oof. Um, I mean, like we said, the receivers got theirs. I mean, but it was all garbage time. I mean, Godwin was 10 for 151. A long catch, a couple long catches late kind of boosted him over top of Evans to overall stat line. Evans was just kind of there. He missed some big ones deep, though. Um, I mean, I think this is kind of what we're going to get from Tampa most of the year. It's just, you know, they might, they're going to fall behind, and they're just going to have to play catch-up, and that's kind of what you're banking on with Winston and these receivers. But, I mean, the guy, five touch, five interceptions, man, that's that's brutal. But that's, that's what he'll give you sometimes. Yeah, and I, I feel like – Every week, it's it's the same you know thing coming out of my mouth as far as Winston is concerned. Is you know what one day he's going to put up you know three hundred and four touchdowns, and then the next week you're going to get you know you know two twenty five and four picks, and you just never quite know what you're going to get from yep. from Winston. Yeah, and this Bob was Long, a perfect example. Yeah, as Bob Long likes to say, uh, he is one of the most inconsistent quarterbacks out there. So. You get what you get with Winston. And, uh, yeah, today was bad, Winston. So moving on to the game of the week, Redskins versus Dolphins. <laughs> oh, uh, you want to just, are you ready to move on? <laughs> Terry McLaurin. Yeah. There you go. Um, I, I, dude, I, so obviously I grew up a Skins fan, still kind of a Skins fan. It's hard to root for him. Uh, I just don't like the organization. But funny, like they went for two at the end of the game, and I'm going – 
Man, they're, right, the they're legit me? trying to lose this game. They don't want to win. <laughs> Listen, the, the eight people that were watching that game didn't want to see overtime. So No, you not know? at all. No. Uh, I mean, look, AP did all right for you if you randomly started him. I had to in one league. Um, McLaurin did great, you know, two yep. touchdowns. Nothing else here, man. Nothing else. We can move on. Absolutely. Um, Seahawks and Browns. This one was an interesting game. Um Seahawks took it 32 to 28. Russell Wilson, Mr. Efficient, um, you know, 295, two touchdowns, had a rushing touchdown as well. I think that's not in the stat line that we wrote down, but I'm pretty sure he got one. Yeah, he Carson did. Carson got 124 and a touch, so big target, big game there by him. But I mean, that's really all it is, is Wilson's just Wilson. Carson's getting his. And I mean, this is what we got, right? Yeah. Another, I mean, this was, like you said, this to watch was an interesting game. It was, it was really, Back and forth, um, quite back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And yeah, it was entertaining to watch fantasy wise, you know, other than the fact that, you know, Carson and Chubb both got their carries, um, you know, both got in the end zone Chubb twice. Um, wasn't a whole lot fantasy wise that, you know, big time came out of the game. Yeah. It's a um, other Seattle news though. Unfortunately, Will Disley went out pretty early. It, they're just calling it Achilles injury right now, but I think we all know what that likely means. So sad news for his owners. Um, <laughs> kicking myself in the ass right now. I benched Disley or benched Kittle for Disley. What? Um, to, to, you, you know, early on, to me about that one. <laughs> well, early today, they're sitting there talking about how Kittle's got a groin injury and he might not even play a full allotment of snaps and. They're going to have to leave him in the block because they're missing a, like a left tackle and um, obviously the, the the fullback, who I'm blanking on the name right now. So, like, it's all this negative new toward, news toward Kittle. And I was like, well, screw it. Like, Disley's awesome. So, I'll just use him. Nah, Disley never, never, and, bench, never bench Kittle. Ah. Life, life lesson. Life lesson, buddy. Well, A, the first four weeks of the season, it would have been the right move. <laughs> Let's, well, let's put it that way. Depends on who who they play against too. Never never Disley's bench good, Mr. Man. Kittle. Disley's good. And anyway, all right. Uh, moving on the Browns side here, we got um, Baker just not looking like Baker, man. Like the Baker that we all thought. Three another three picks. That's bad. You know, as Chubb got his. I mean, that's that's really all there's to it. Um, he this offense needs to run through Chubb for this team to succeed. And yes. I think they're finally starting to realize that, but Baker still had to throw the ball 37 times, which is not going to be a recipe for success in, in this offense. Completely agree. Yep. Yeah, that offense needs to run through Chubb. Um, I, he's such really the monster, only guy dude. that what's that? He's such a monster. I know. Um, but yeah, he's the only guy on that team. Uh, this might sound crazy, but um, even, even considering Odell, Chubb's the only guy in that team that week to week, I pretty much trust. Yeah, I mean Odell finally got his eleven targets. You know, it's six for six for one hundred and one. But yeah, it's, it's yeah, the passing off isn't anything I'm I'm looking forward to using any yeah. any week. Two, two up and down, man. Yeah, Texans Chiefs next game. Uh, Texans thirty one, Chiefs twenty four. Texans lose an or Chiefs lose another one, man. Uh, two another, in a row here. This was a hell of a game too, man. This, one this was, was back and forth, back and forth the yeah. whole way. Yeah. Um. Carlos Hyde, man, was really the 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 highlight for the Texans. I mean, Watson kind of struggled. Um, Hopkins really never got it going. Got a ton of targets, but just never really could connect. Fuller missed on three touchdown catches, man. Like that was yep. brutal. Um, so he could have had a monster game again, but just didn't. But Hyde, man, Hyde looked fast. I was watching him watching that game constantly on red zone, and he looked ridiculous. Ridiculously good. I was like, wow. Well, uh, I was in here really Fair word of warning, though, man. Like, if you remember last week, Carry on Johnson looked, you know, all pro against the Chiefs as well. So, I mean, I, I do on. like Carlos Hyde, but Wait, I think Carrion it's more the Chiefs. Week, what? What's that? Chiefs played the Colts last week. Oh, two weeks ago. Whatever, Joe. Oh, okay. You get my point. My, <laughs> my point is okay. the Chiefs' rush defense sucks. Gotcha. Yeah, true. But still, Carlos Hyde. Hasn't... Yeah, so. Lions had a bye week, so it's the last game in my uh, head for them. Gotcha, so. gotcha. Okay. Uh, on the Chiefs' side, um, 
Tyreek Hill returned, so that's good news. He got an amazing catch. <laughs> Yeah, amazing touchdown yeah. catch in the first quarter, and that was pretty much it. Like, he caught another touchdown, but it's of, like, a broken play. He just kind of sat there in the corner of the end zone. was like, hi, I'm open. Um, Mahomes wasn't really efficient. Uh, my big takeaway, I'll let you say your own note here. My big takeaway was Damian Williams only had two touches. Thankfully, one of them was a touchdown. <laughs> yeah, a nice, a nice I one feel too. bad for the dude I sold to start Damian Williams over Devonta Freeman, by the way. I'm really sorry. Ooh, bro. ouch. Right, but who knew Damian Williams was going to get two touches? Yeah, that'd have been a tough one. In retrospect, I want to say I would have still banked on Freeman just because of the matchup. But I mean, I don't know. I guess that that was that was a close call at it the time. It was tough. It was tough for me to make that call. But um, but yeah, I don't know. What do you what do you think here, man? Now that first Tyreek Hill touchdown was, you know, it was an offsides play where Mahomes just kind of threw it up. Um, it was two defenders against Hill and Hill went up and kind of made a great play on the ball. Um, and I was like, ah, oh, damn it. Maybe I, maybe I should have started him in, in a couple of these DFS lineups, but um, yeah, I mean, all in all, you know, I, I watched a, a good chunk of that game and just a, another week where for whatever reason, the chiefs offense is, is just out of sync. It's just weird. Like Mahomes is just throwing some, just some oddly inaccurate passes and it's not you know because of the weird angles he throws from you know every now and again he just he just seems off kilter for i don't know what reason i mean maybe maybe the ankles are bothering him more than we think i was gonna ask that because i can't think of another reason yeah because early in the colts game he tweaked that ankle right that i think he hurt early Mm -hmm. in the preseason and um ever since then he's kind of been off it's either that or they're Teams are legit figuring out this offense a little bit. Uh, I mean, they've also, you know, haven't been healthy, obviously. I mean, Hill comes back, but now Watkins is still gone. And so, I mean, it is a little, well, I mean, everyone, I guess, is in the same boat. No one's fully healthy at this point of the year. But, yeah, that that offense is its weird. It's just weirdly out of sync. Yeah. I'm still okay using pretty much everybody except maybe Damian Williams now. Punk. <laughs> right. <laughs> I apologize to that dude on Twitter. I was like, I'm sorry, man. I really hope you won anyway. He goes, I did. <laughs> I was like, Thank you. I felt like a jerk. Um, Eagles, Vikings, Vikings 38, Eagles 20. Start off here with the Eagles. Uh, Alishon Jeffrey uh, was just ripping them apart, man. 10 catches, 76 yards, and a touch. Almost had a second touchdown. Um, this was this was a good game by Alshon, man. I mean, I don't know. I, I guess I feel like a broken record because I'll I'll say this about a variety of teams, but Eagles are another one where they have just too many weapons for me to trust. So, you know, Alshon had a great game. Well, I wouldn't say great, but he had a nice game today. Um, but you just don't know what you're going to get week from week because they have so many guys to throw the ball to. Um, it's, it's just hard to pinpoint someone DFS wise, at least, um, obviously, if you own Alshon and you know your, your regular league, you're you're probably not sitting him ever. Yeah, and I mean that's you know I don't play a lot of DFS, so that's my angle on it is that Alshon mm-hmm. is probably in my lineup every week because I own him in a couple of different leagues. Right. Um, interestingly enough, a little side note here for them is Sanders. The run game was terrible, but Sanders was heavily involved in the passing game. I mean, but as you said, he's still super hard to trust. Um, the run game, anybody on this run game is just, I, I don't, I try not to touch them. Um, right. Moving on, Vikings, another Kirk Cousins bounce back game, baby, earning those $3 yeah. million dollar checks, man. Probably um, his best as a Viking. Yeah, holy crap, right? 333, four touchdowns, three of them going to Mr. Squeaky Wheel himself, Stefan Diggs. So, uh, you know, Thielen got his big, big game last week, and this week it was Diggs. Uh, I mean, they both got to be happy now, right? They both got their games. It's like, shut up, go away. Let's go back to cook next week, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe. I mean, and, and Thielen had a touchdown and he did. just about had a second one as well. Um, yeah. It just it didn't get it didn't get reviewed. Um, but it was cl- I don't know if it was a touchdown or not, but it was definitely close. So yeah, man, that's scary. I I mean, God, I hate to say it, but. Depending on the upcoming matchups, I probably am gonna put a little bit of trust in into this 
Cousins and Diggs and and Thielen stack, um, which like I said, it will mean that you know Cook will get thirty carries for you know two hundred and seventy five yards and five touchdowns. But <laughs> yeah, um, probably. I mean, I mean, I don't know that there's a a much better one two punch when they're when they're you know on than than Diggs and Thielen. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, all right, moving on. We got. Saints versus the Jaguars. Saints 13, Jaguars 6. This game was pretty brutal. Um, Boring. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you can call it a defensive game or not, but like neither offense could get going. Uh, Saints side, I, I guess. He was pretty fierce, man. Yeah, I mean, the so the Saints side here, Thomas was a highlight, 8 of 89. I mean, I guess the big news is the Kamara. I mean, he came into this game not 100%. And, like, you, I mean, you just right. hit everybody's – nobody's 100%, right? But he came in with a late week injury, which is never good. So maybe that was a big reason why this offense struggled. You know, only 31 yards uh, rushing. I think he had a bunch of um, – he had a bunch of receptions too, which kind of salvaged a fantasy day for him. Seven receptions, but only thirty-five yards there. So in PPR leagues, you're going, man, mm-hmm. whatever. <laughs> right. Game PPR sucks, people. Uh, I'll half only. I cannot do full PPR. It's total garbage. Um, on the Jag side here, our boy DJ Shark. He got shut down today, and Minshew looked like a backup finally. Yeah, man, like like Shark was was really chalky for for DFS purposes, and right? he's, I he's still probably pretty cheap, right? Um, on the God, cheaper I didn't, end of like the really good yeah, receivers, I imagine. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I I I only had enough of him so that I could say that I had some of him because I, I was afraid that Lattimore was gonna kind of shut him down, which is exactly what happened. So. I'm glad that I, I really faded him in DFS. I, I would have had no choice but to start him in, in a regular league. Um, but DFS-wise, I I veered away from him strongly. Um, yeah, man, I mean, he's I, I, I'm not sour on him. It's just, I mean, sometimes in the NFL, well, not sometimes, in the NFL matchups can usually, you know, absolutely. dictate a whole bunch. Yep, um, absolutely. Which is why I wouldn't play anyone against Jalen Ramsey when he's healthy and, you know, wants to play. <laughs> but Lad- yeah. but Lattimore, man, is the real deal too. And mm-hmm. it's not like Shark is some elite receiver. I, I'm pretty sure he's like top ten um for fantasy points for receivers. So um that's not a knock on him. It's just I, I thought that Lattimore might kind of contain him this week and I guess however you want to look at it. Fortunately or unfortunately he did. Yep. Next game, Bengals, Ravens, Bengals seventeen, Ravens twenty three. Um story out of Cincy is, I mean, it, I'm not cutting Joe Mixon, but I'm not starting Joe Mixon until he figures this out, right? I, I, yeah, probably not the rest I of the year. Cannot I cannot do this anymore. That like, offensive I'm, line is terrible. He's so bad. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's not him. It is not a knock on Mixon. He's still talented. Right. You you know it. Um, it's yeah. It's that offensive line. They cannot block anybody, man. Uh, on the Ravens side here. This was the Lamar Jackson show, man. Again. Zero passing <laughs> touchdowns. He ran for 152 yards. Yep. Holy crap. I mean, I think, and, and I don't have it in front of me, at one point in today's games, he had the most rushing yards of anybody. So unless somebody from the four o'clock games passed. No, I think, he, I think he was the leading rusher for the day. Yeah. He was the leading rusher of the day. That's pretty crazy. So, but still, man, you know, Mark Ing- Mark An- Andrews got his six for ninety nine. You're happy there. Ingram got a touch. Uh, so I mean, every, you know, people did what they had to do. I mean, this was without Hollywood Brown, so that you know, the passing offense takes a step back, obviously, without him. Uh, but hey, they got the job done. Yeah, Lamar Jackson is just he's just stupid good, man. Like. I mean, I the, the problem for for me in in DFS this week was there was a handful of quarterbacks that I really liked, mm-hmm. and a couple of them I just had to not get as many shares of as I wanted, and and Jackson was one of them. Um, and so because I didn't go with Jackson, I, I relied a little bit heavy on Ingram, um, especially once Hollywood was was deemed out because mm-hmm. I knew they were going to run the hell out of the ball. 
Um, and so then I was going to be him as much. (laughs) Well, right, right, right. So I was kind of going back and forth and I was thinking, man, do I want to bump up my exposure to Ingram or do I want to bump up my exposure to Jackson figuring he was going to run the ball more? Now, obviously I didn't expect him to have 152 yards and a touchdown, but I, I, I went with Ingram instead of more Jackson shares because I had so many quarterbacks that I liked. Mm-hmm. And I guess life lesson, at least for this year, man, if Lamar Jackson has got a good matchup, you've got to get your share of him. Yeah, he's just going to eat some defenses alive. Yeah. On to the 49ers Rams, and this one really shocked me. I mean, like, look, I think we're all starting to jump on this 49ers bandwagon a little bit and believe in this team. It, I mean, I get the Rams were without – uh, without Gurley today, but wow. Holding the Rams to seven points. I mean, that's the story of the game, right? And the 49ers defense mm-hmm. just came out and dominated this team. Yeah, I don't know that Gurley would have made a difference, no. especially with, with how he's played this year. Um, I mean, the, he's been the, touchdown the, dependent. It hasn't been mm-hmm. him like just dominating. It's been like they've gotten close and just like he punched it to the end type of thing. So, yeah, I'm with you. No, and it, and it really wasn't. You know, it really wasn't the case of necessarily the Rams just, you know, playing poorly. It was that the 49ers defense forced them to play poorly. They had, man, I'm trying to remember exactly. Um, There was at least three, if not like four, fourth and one or fourth and twos that they stopped them on. Uh, They had a goal line stand. Uh, They stopped them on a bunch of third and shorts. I mean, that defense was just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Um, And I, I know that, you know, you kind of logic would tell you well if they had Gurley, they'd have been more likely to get those short yardage you know first downs but i don't know man yeah this was a, a pretty rough day for the rams and i mean proof right there jared goff 13 for 24 78 yeah. yards yeah he had a rough day that the the receivers were so covered by that niners defense like I mean, every pass that he was throwing was so contested um, at the you know point of catch, um, and then they were getting pressure on him. So, yeah, I, I, I'm, Robert, I'm, Robert Woods didn't even get a reception; he had four targets. Thankfully, he ran in one from eight yards out. Yeah, and anyone that I have that's facing the 49ers defense this year, um, I am probably just avoiding. I, I don't care who it is at this point. It, that that defense was was for real. Yeah, I mean, it's season long. It's going to be hard to avoid them completely. But in DFS, yeah, I think yeah. I think they're one of those teams that you're not targeting to play against. Relative, you know, not in the least. Yeah, Falcons Cardinals next game really close game. Cardinals took it thirty four to thirty three. Um, more of the same for the for the Falcons, man. Um, you know, had to come back again. They were down twenty seven ten. So Matt Ryan time, right? 356 yards, four touchdowns. For fantasy owners, you love it. As a Falcons owner or a fan, you hate it. <laughs> um, yeah, I can't even imagine. I own Matt Ryan. I own Julio. I own uh, Calvin Ridley in a couple places. I love it. When they get behind us, it's like, all right, here, it's well, time to go, guys. Yeah, every week. Every <laughs> time week, to go, man. guys. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, that's uh, exactly what happened today, too. They were down 27-10, and you know the, the offense wasn't looking so hot, and you knew that they were just going to start – you know, passing that ball around, and that's what they did. And before you know it, it's you know twenty seven, twenty seven, and then yep. um, yeah. So yeah, that's exactly the script that I was hoping for DFS wise. Um, I had the majority of my shares in in Ryan um, Hooper, and unfortunately, I I had a lot of Sanu who didn't who didn't do much. But yeah, um, so that I was getting great. nervous there. Um, it took basically about halfway through the third quarter before they really started getting it going. I think. Ryan had like 120 ish yards at in one touchdown at the half, and I was like, "Oh shit!" Yeah, like, oh man. I'm like, hopefully they do what they've done every week, and thankfully fantasy explode you know, in there. the second half. Yep, exactly. Yep. Uh, on the Cardinal side, Kyler Murray looking looking pretty good. I mean, yeah, I get it. Atlanta's defense not good, but you know, hey, Kyler Murray is is looking like he belongs here. No sacks, no interceptions. That's always good. Um, 340 yards passing, three touchdowns. I mean, uh, he ran 11 times, only 32 yards. But, I mean, you just like to see him evolving that he is. Like, it's it's looking good. And, you know, this this offense, I think, is going to be able to compete with some of the best out there, too, at, at this point. What do you think? 
Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, God, there's been at least three different weeks now where I've seen him and, you know, the, the, the stats and the points may not necessarily always show it. Um, I mean, this week the stats are pretty good. Um, but yeah, that offense has a chance to be a lead. I mean, they show flashes with him at quarterback of just ridiculousness. And he doesn't really have a lot of guys that throw the ball to you. I mean, if we're being honest and oh, especially you know, this week without Christian Kirk. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, Fitzgerald is a Hall of Famer, you know. I mean, obviously, um, you know, the guy is still money, but he's not gonna absolutely dominate a game anymore. And then Christian Kirk is is cool and all, but I mean he, he's not a Pro Bowl receiver. Um, man, you know, if, if you could get him somebody like Odell or something, you know, um, to, to fire the ball to no. that, that team would be fun Od- to watch. Od- they can't play defense worth shit, but they Od- can, they'll be able to score. Odell's a virus. Don't put him with anybody who's well, I, who for will. fantasy purposes, man. Like, <laughs> you you know imagine, what I mean, though. You know, imagine that, you know, um, no, oh, I know what you're saying. I just, I did. I'm not an Odell fan. As far as like personality wise, I think he's a locker room virus. He needs to grow up. Right. My fantasy team don't give a shit. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, fantasy owners of Odell this year, how y'all feeling? How's that second round pick going? Hey, uh, they'll, they'll feel they'll feel better if he was in Arizona. It probably. All right, Cowboys Jets here. Big, big, big upset, guys. A twenty two Cowboys Jets twenty four. Do I sound do, do I sound too happy? <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, dude, dude, Darno's the real deal, man. Dude, he's like, awesome. He makes such a difference on that offense. It is, I mean, it isn't even night and day. It's like, it, it's it's more than that. Like, this is exactly what you wanted to see if you owned any Jet that wasn't named Darno. Yeah. Because he comes back and... The like, offense yeah. is, like, normal and good, yeah. actually. Yeah, Jamison it's Crowder insane. is back to being a good play. Um, I mean, granted, Robbie Anderson had most of his damage on, on one, one big play. play, but but that's but what he could that's, do. That's him. Right, that's, that's Robbie Anderson. Exactly. Like he wasn't doing that with, with Falk, you know, no. um, Crowder yeah. was getting zeros. I mean, mm-hmm. the bell, you know, not awesome, but good, useful, you know, he was fine. Yeah. Bell, yeah. That bell bell three only 30 yards, two touchdowns. Dude, this is, this is good. Uh, for mm-hmm. that Jets for that Jets team, uh, on the Cowboys side, it was a rough showing, man. They, you know, they came back and almost got, almost tied this game late. You know, Zeke, Zeke was just—I don't know. Zeke was good and bad. Like it was weird. Like I saw some flashes where he was like, "What the hell are you doing?" And then other times where it was like, "Ah, there he is." You know, I wonder if this goes. This offense really just was super affected by the fact that Amari Cooper was left in the first quarter and didn't return. Like they seem to struggle when like one of their players. One of the main three leaves. Well, I, I disagree because they were down twenty-one-three, and this—I uh, don't know. Well, yeah, you got to call it a comeback. Yeah, the, they, the, the comeback happened with Cooper on the bench, I guess. But they—they kind of like they lose their identity right away. And so it takes them too long to figure out like what they have to do when 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 players leave. I don't know. It's just, I, I. I I'm not sad. I'm not a Cowboys fan. Obviously, I'm a Skins fan, so I, I love it. <laughs> yeah, I actually, <laughs> dude, fun. I'm telling you, I, I, I actually really like this Jets offense, and I may be the only person that would have even – I would have said this last week. I, just, I, well, I did say this last week. I said, don't touch anyone, including Le'Veon, until Darno gets back, and then you're going to have – you're going to have, you know, good options. And that's exactly yeah. what happened. And I don't think that this is – a fluke. I don't think this is a you know Jameis Winston kind of thing where you know he has a good week and then he has a terrible week and then he has a great week. And I mean Sam Darno is solid, and I I have no problem with you know having any shares of Crowder or Bell. Um, you know it, it, as long as the matchup is right, they're not playing the Forty ers or something stupid. Yeah, um, I mean, I hey, look, I drafted Jameis and Crowder in a bunch of leagues. I thought he was super underrated. Uh, I. I wrote about him on fantasy pros as like one of my, as my sleeper pick, uh, you know, obviously it hadn't worked out so far because Darnold's been hurt, but I, I, yeah. was gonna, I never dropped him because of it. Nope. Super bold call of the day, by the way, right before the game started, I was like, uh, it was my dynasty league. I'm like, I'm looking at my quarterback and I go, I've got Aaron Rodgers. I don't want to start Aaron Rodgers. My backup is Dalton and Darnold. You, know, you can like, just drop Dalton, man. <laughs> And, well, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but I was like, you know, screw it. I threw in Darnold at the last second. It was literally like twelve fifty nine, and I swapped him in. Oh my. 
I, you know, I think it's going to work out pretty nicely. I hope that it's a genius. I hope Aaron Rodgers throws seven picks tomorrow of night. And, of course. Makes me look absolutely stupid. But, yeah, I uh, hope you look like a genius, man. But, A, Darnold already had a better game today than Rodgers has had all year. So I'm, I'm okay with it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, think I'm going to lose, probably, unfortunately. Yeah. And I'll get on that in a second. But, uh, Last game here, Titans Broncos. Broncos sixteen, Titans zero. Uh, I called the Broncos game, man. as my defense to pick up this week as a streamer and owned mm-hmm. forty percent or less of leagues. And wow, did that work out? <laughs> the Titans yeah, good, could not good be good combination, worse. man. Good combination um, with good D and a terrible offense. The, the story, the only story coming out of this for Titans is they finally benched Mariota. I mean, Tannehill's their backup, but like, wow, I don't like the not much better I, I don't know what to do like I literally don't have any idea what to do with the Titans offense I mean Henry's the only person you can even think about starting every week and it was a rough go for him today even so I don't yeah know. Henry has been like ungodly consistent like up until this yeah. week like you could chalk him not up for, normal for him no he he literally was putting up the first you know the first five weeks he was putting up almost identical stat lines every week and yep. this was a tough matchup. Um, I, I had a lot of Henry shares just because I thought it would be a low-scoring game, um, which at least it was on the Titans side of the ball. But, um, you know, <laughs> I, I knew that it was going to be low-scoring. I thought they were just going to pound the hell out of the ball. And, um, yeah, um, a little bit, but not so much. Yeah, on Broncos' side, um, I mean, the only focal point here is the running backs. Split carries kind of right down the middle here, but Lindsay's a better player. So I think you're still starting Lindsay just because it just keeps working. Uh, and Freeman, you're that's a you know that, that's a bi week flex type of option. You know, that's the only time I think I'm, I'm using Freeman. Um, Emmanuel Sanders left this game with a knee. It doesn't sound like the thing I read just before we, we recorded this is that it doesn't sound like it's serious. So that's good to hear. Uh, cause Sanders has been pretty good despite Flacco not being mm-hmm. very good. Like the receivers have been useful at least. Yeah. I mean, um, Sutton, I love Sutton. Sutton, Sutton and Sanders have both is, been solid. Yeah. Yeah. Sutton is routinely pretty cheap and he's been pretty consistent as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've been happy with, with Sutton, but, but man, I, this, this rushing uh, attack, well, not even the rushing attack, just their, their use in general between Lindsey and Freeman is just so stupid. Like, like I get it for, like, you know, real-life purposes, you know, for the Broncos, but fantasy-wise, like, Lindsey is – he's been so much better. the best player efficiently, um, just, you know, eyeball tests on the field, and they just continue to, you know, basically give them even touches between, you know, rushes and, you know, catching the ball and – Man, yeah, if, if Lindsay could have some serious value if Royce Freeman just ceased to exist. Yeah, pretty much, kind of like last year. I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess you probably could honestly say the same thing though if you were to flip it and say, hey, if you know, if Lindsay didn't exist, Freeman would be a, a decent option too. But he would. But yeah, man, Lindsay is. Yeah, he he just he gets so bogged down in that, you know, in that timeshare. Yeah, it's tough. So. My that's all we got for the games. My Sunday venting stories. I got one this week. I am in two different leagues where I am going to end up being the second highest scorer. Maybe maybe three leagues actually, and I'm gonna lose to the highest scorer. Man, <laughs> I wrote hashtag the worst. Like, <laughs> I, I, uh, sometimes fantasy football sucks, man. Like, <laughs> it's so brutal. Uh Nah, There's what? literally nothing you can do. It's one one day of games, right? Like, ah, anything can happen. One day. Yeah. I, I can't tell you how many times. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of us, but I can't tell you how many times I've been on the same coin, man. Like, there was one time a couple years ago, um, I I led the league in scoring um, by a decent amount. Like, I was probably, uh, I don't remember, 10, 15% higher um, for a point scored for the whole year than, you know, the, the next closest guy. And I didn't even make the playoffs. So an oh. eight team, eight team, you know, eight teams out of the 12 made the playoffs and I literally didn't make the playoffs oh and I gosh. led the league and score. Yeah. How does that even happen, Joe? Like that's almost impossible. Yeah. Um, I, but yeah. The, the I, variance in, in football yeah. is so crazy. Yeah. 
So I lost on, I mean, I missed out on the last spot because of tiebreakers. So, I mean, I tied for the worst record to make the playoffs, but didn't you make the playoffs and I led the league in scoring by a decent tie amount. Tiebreaker should be points. <laughs> the no, tie, well, the tiebreaker tiebreaker, tie head to head. No, the tiebreaker needs to be wow. points to wow. Listen. benefit people like you who have the better team. And because so, you lost one random week, that sucks. Listen. Here's here's the thing, really. So the the tiebreaker idea for being head to head, hundred percent mine. That's your fault. So I, I did I know. So I did it to myself, I suppose, but but yeah, man, that uh, I yeah, I, I can feel you as far as, you know, putting up the second most points in the league and you face the one guy that you wouldn't have beat. It's just yeah, it's it's brutal. It's not that it's just one league. It's two possibly three of my leagues this week i'm just like yeah. i'm looking at the scores going like oh i put up 130 the hell i played the guy put up 160 yeah. <laughs> what the hell it's brutal all right man well that's all we got thanks for uh thanks for listening and um hope you did well this week come back next week for uh more recap see you later